Hi, I'm Alex from Thaiscuba.com. Today we want to cover an issue that is very interesting for photographers, which is the issue of a macro photography lens for underwater use that you can actually build by yourself. A few days ago I posted some underwater macro pictures on my own Facebook page and the one on my website with the remark that I actually had taken them with a lens that I built myself with components probably costing me less than 3% of a factory made macro lens. A lot of other divers have contacted me and asked, hey Alex, can you please share your findings? How did you actually do it? So this video is all about this. A disclaimer up front, what I did for my camera model absolutely worked. But since you have different camera models and may not be able to access the same type of material that I was, I want this video to be understood as an inspiration, as a guide to understanding how to do it yourself, as opposed to just doing exactly my personal lens. So I hope you can take it from there with the stuff I can give you. I will break it down in five easy steps. The first step is to choose your right lens. Lens in this respect is of course a uh, magnifying glass. This is a very simple object and uh, actually you can find it anywhere. Here in Thailand, I found a lot at uh, the Chato Chat Market, also uh, Yawalat, north of Chinatown. Now the one that worked for me was this one right here. A very, very simple and actually very cheap plastic magnification lens. It had a great ratio and uh, aspect of magnification. And uh, because it was plastic, it was perfect material for underwater use. Uh, if you can, stay away from anything metallic as it is always subject to corrosion. As you go shopping for uh, magnifying lenses, make sure you test one thing, the actual magnification, because there are a lot of lenses that are much larger than this that have a smaller magnification ratio than this. So for me, this 10 centimeter diameter was perfect, and this particular lens was both cheap and it had a very, very nice magnification. One thing you will find is that Actually, the distance of the magnifying glass to the camera lens is irrelevant since whatever distance, the magnification ratio is the same. That allows us to place the lens as close as possible to the camera. Take your second magnifying glass and you will see back to back that actually the magnification is becoming huge. However, there's one shortfall. You will find out that there is only a very fixed distance between the lens and the object you're photographing where the focus is actually sharp. That doesn't matter because you can accommodate for that. Another thing that I found out, the distance from the first lens to the second lens actually doesn't matter. So it is very convenient for us to know that we can actually put them back to back and uh, keep the lens very short. So what about the macro settings of your camera? As soon as you go on macro, you can see you can get as close as 2 inches, 5 centimeters away from your object. And the width of your frame is about 3.5 inches wide. So it is on my camera. As soon as you start to zoom, the focus slips and the camera tells you to back up. You can do this as far as 20, 30 centimeters. And you will find that the only thing that really changes is the depth of field. But the size of the object within your frame will always be the same. Now with both lenses in front of your camera, you will see that you can actually bring down the frame width to about an inch and a half. Because on top of the added magnification from the lenses, you can actually bring in your optical zoom all the way forward while still staying quite close to the object. Now let's see if all of this and any of this holds true underwater. Let's take our magnifying glasses to the pool. Once you do a simple test with magnifying glasses in the pool, you will see one thing that is very apparent. The magnification of anything with a single magnifying glass is less underwater than it is in air. Likewise, with both lenses in front of the camera, and again our optical zoom all the way forward, I wasn't able to get the same inch and a half frame width which I got back in air, but only about two and a half inches. And moving any closer always resulted in a loss of focus. With this information at hand, I then decided that I wanted to build a macro lens that was airtight and waterproof to basically preserve the space in between the lenses as airspace and find a way to somehow seal off the area around it. Now at this point in the video I can already tell you that this assumption proved to be correct because my frame width went from this with two lenses and water in between to this with two lenses that had air in between. 
But making it waterproof is not enough because as divers we understand with increasing depth there is increasing pressure. So the water pressure would eventually press against each lens on each side and eventually make them collapse. For that reason we need to have a spacer, something that withstands the pressure that will happen in between the lenses. My solution for this issue was right here, a 3 inch PVC pipe connector because its diameter was just slightly smaller than the diameter inside of my magnifying lens. And I would have to cut off a ring the size so it would fit on the inside of each lens and just a bit more to have them apart about one millimeter. The next issue was how do we actually keep those two magnifying glasses in place. And the solution of this was epoxy putty. You can find epoxy putty in hardware stores in a section where they sell glues. Epoxy putty is great stuff. It comes in tubes like these and uh, basically inside it has two components of different colors. You see here blue and white. You would then use a piece of this and mold it in your hand like a lump of clay so the two components connect. It bonds within a minute and later on becomes as hard as a rock. This is great stuff. Now here's my finished lens and you can see that blue PVC spacer right in here. But how about that epoxy putty? This is how I did it. With the two lenses I first added epoxy putty around the outer ring of the first lens. I then fitted the PVC in there. Now I'm sorry this is just the uncut portion this is just for demonstration purposes and then added more putty to fill in the gaps right here. I did exactly the same thing with the second lens. Add epoxy putty around the outer edge inside and then put everything in place to arrive at this. Since before I had designed the blue spacer inside to lift these two off just by a millimeter here then the epoxy putty would come out and show. I then added more epoxy putty on the outside to seal off the compartment completely. With the epoxy putty hardened I then added silicone window sealer around the inner rim of the lens on both sides and I actually added a coat of silicone on the outside of everything. So here's our finished lens. At this point in time you could already take really good pictures with it. However, we want to build a housing around it to protect it and make it look just a little better than this. The perfect size for me was something that was larger than this component right here and in my case it was a 4 inch, another PVC uh, sewage pipe fitting that fitted and housed this lens just perfectly. So a small thing on the side I did is I actually added another ring around here in the inside just to increase the diameter of this thing right here. Um, I used very simple like uh, black plastic material. Anything will go just so you can increase the diameter here and the lens will have a better hold. Um, I just then placed the lens inside and the PVC connector would have to be cut here at the same distance that the lens is. So basically both components are flush. On the other side I decided to leave about half an inch 12 millimeters and cut it here in that way. So here for comparison here's my finished lens. Here um, these components are flush and on that side here I have about 12 millimeters left on the side. Now okay this lens is still a bit loose so I want to find a way to make it tighter. 
I was able to find this three millimeter, two millimeter foam mat uh, from which I cut off this strip right here, which was a perfect solution to make this fit snugly in our PVC pipe connector. And as you see, I used the same foam material around here just to give it a bit of cushioning and to make it look better. Now that we have a great housing around the great lens, what will be the ways of actually attaching it to your camera housing so it stays in place? Now in my case, I was uh, super lucky that I had one of these left, which is actually a fitting from one of my old wide angle lenses. Now this is a wide angle lens that comes from my camera housing and the first one broke, so I have this fitting left. Uh, lucky me, but what if you don't have it, most likely you won't. So let's look at other alternatives of how we can fit our lens onto our camera housing. Here's one. I actually found this one inch foam mat. It is quite sturdy, it's quite strong. So it's perfect because you can cut it with a cutter but it will still hold the shape. First step is you do is um, you track around the diameter of your lens and you cut out this circle. With this circle you then centric cut around the shape of your lens barrel of your underwater housing and cut this one out. Then you're left with a shape that can fit around your housing and holds the diameter for your lens. Alternatively to that black mat, you could probably easily find this baby's kickboard right here, which is a similar foam, a bit thicker and probably a bit easier to work with too. Again, your camera doesn't have to look pretty, your pictures will have to. Let's go on to how we attach our lens to our fitting. Actually, Canon has intended for my camera model these loops for very simple hooks with black bungee cords attachment of any type of lens that would be uh, accessory. I decided to use the same principle for attaching my own lens. It's basically here, black bungee cord and carabiners that I found. I clipped off that small part and uh, disassembled the back and I had these small hooks that worked just fine. So those were my findings, creating my own macro lens for underwater photography. I hope it was inspirational for you and I hope you get to a result similar as I did and enjoy it as much as I did. I would be very interested in knowing if yours worked just as much. Please leave me a message in the comments box right down below on YouTube. Thanks a lot and see you next time.